For me, a movie that brilliantly combines both cinematic storytelling and social critique is David Fincher's The Social Network. The movie centers around Mark Zuckerberg, played by Jesse Eisenberg and the creation of Facebook. Now, the work of director David Fincher is known for dark, central themes of macabre violence, crime and broken psychology. His major characters range from emotionally closed off to depressed and schizophrenic to complete psychopathic serial killers. She begged for her life, detective. Shut up! She begged for her life. Shut up! And for the life of the baby inside of her. Shut up! Knowing this, I think it's easy to predict the social network is not going to be your average run-of-the-mill young struggling entrepreneur success story. This already becomes clear in the soundtrack during the opening credits. This piece of music that returns multiple times in the movie combines a sad piano tune with an uneasy tension creating violin behind it. This score created by Trent Reznor already illustrates the major themes of the movie, namely a broken loneliness and a seething anger and thirst for power underneath it. So the question is, what is the social network really about? Let's get started. The narrative of the movie doesn't rely so much on the creation of Facebook to be a good story. The central themes can also be found in many important stories throughout history. As the writer of the film, Aaron Sorkin says, It's not a movie about Facebook, it's a movie set against the backdrop of Facebook. But really, it's the, the, the themes in this movie are as old as storytelling itself. The, as he calls them, Shakespearean themes that Sorkin is talking about are things like power hunger, social class, sex and love, friendship, loyalty and betrayal. Oh, your only friend. Yet yeah, one friend. These themes are embedded in a plot that focuses on the relationships that Mark has and destroys during the creation of Facebook. The narrative is told from the perspective of two hearings, one where Mark is sued by his former best friend and another where Mark is sued by his competitors. The opening act and all other scenes that focus on the creation of Facebook are in fact flashbacks, slowly revealing the reasons Mark is sued for fucking over his best friend and potentially stealing the idea of Facebook from his competition. Do you see any of your code on Facebook? I could Mark, you. did I use any of your code? You stole our whole goddamn idea. Fellas. Match.com for hard I continue with my deposition. You know, you really don't need a forensics team to get to the bottom of this. If you guys were the inventors of Facebook, you'd have invented Facebook. It is certainly true that the film's plot can stand on its own as a strong and entertaining story. Yet in my opinion, to see the creation of Facebook as just the background of the story does not do the film justice. Facebook as the biggest and most powerful social network in the world is a fascinating subject for media scholars. And a lot of questions and critique on its working is found within the plot, dialogue and especially the characters' personalities. You have part of my attention, you have the minimum amount. The rest of my attention is back at the offices of Facebook, where my colleagues and I are doing things that no one in this room, including and especially your clients, are intellectually or creatively capable of doing. I want to look at this from a couple of different perspectives, building it up in importance. But first, I have to say, many schoolers have found positive aspects of Facebook. Since we know the nature of Fincher's work, we are mainly discussing critique on Facebook, which of course is very real and important critique, but it doesn't mean Facebook is something evil that only has negative effects on social life. For example, Facebook has had very positive effects on weak social ties meaning that weak social relations such as holiday friends, which are problematic because of distance, can stay active thanks to Facebook. Now back to the film's critique on Facebook. A major issue of the recent years is internet bullying and the nature of the comment sections. Discussions on social and political issues often quickly escalate to hateful comments online. For victims of bullying, often in high school, the bullying continues to Facebook when they come home. In the social network, when Mark gets broken up with, he blogs hatefully about his ex-girlfriend. When he tries to apologize, she perfectly explains the nature of internet bullying in a couple of lines. The internet's not written in pencil, Mark, it's written in ink. And you published that Erica Albright was a bitch right before you made some ignorant crack about my family's name, my bra size, and then rated women based on their hotness. You write your snide bullshit from a dark room because that's what the angry do nowadays. During the beginning of the film, after Mark's girlfriend breaks up with him in the opening scene, 
Mark also creates a website where you can rank the university's girls in hotness against each other. The scene intercuts the creation and immediate popularity of this website against a fraternity party where girls are brought in on a bus and are clearly sexually objectified. This illustrates beautifully how the sexual objectification of girls in college is digitalized, creating a sort of power shift from the fraternity popular jocks to the so-called nerds that created the website. At the end of the scene, even the jocks at the party are clicking on the website. This is the key of the film's critiques. It's concentrating on the digitalization of the social experience of college. Not only the fun parts, but also the hard parts, such as social hierarchy, exclusion and rejection. I'm talking about taking the entire social experience of college and putting it online. I can't feel my legs. I know. I'm totally psyched about this too, but Wardo. Yeah. It would be exclusive. See, in a world where social structure was everything, that was the thing. This brings us back to the original themes of sadness and anger in the opening credits soundtrack. When we see Facebook as a digitalization of social life, we have to look at the social life of its creator. Already in the opening scene of the film, much becomes clear about Mark's motivations. He is obsessed with getting into a final club because of the social standing it would provide. But because of this, he completely misses out that his girlfriend is trying to have a real conversation with him and he is condescending to her social position. ...with you and tell you that I think you might want to be a little more supportive. If I get in, I will be taking you to the events and the gatherings and you'll be meeting a lot of people you wouldn't normally get to meet. You would do that for me? We're dating. Mark's solution to his inability and anger about not being able to create authentic social relations is to become obsessed with improving his position in the social hierarchy of college. GM Tyree in his paper The Dislike Button says, One of the problems of Facebook is that it's like the IKEA of the mind, rewarding users who generate an endless flow of good news and consumable tidbits of their own interiority. A stream of folks consciousness that makes one seem more cheerful, more entrepreneurial and more boring than anyone that someone would ever want to befriend. This is what we see in Mark's personality. Instead of trying to mend broken relations, his solution is to try and appear more successful, hoping that people will accept him. Hey, that was great. That was the right thing to do. You apologized, right? At the end of the movie, Mark is destroying every authentic social relationship, living more in the social fantasy of Facebook, wired in as Justin Timberlake's character says. Yet Mark's former best friend still tries one more time to violently break through, thus revealing a desire for intimacy, for messy but real human contact. Mark! Mark! He's wired in. Sorry? He's wired in. Is he? Yes. How about now? You're still wired in? Call security. You issued 24 million new shares of stock. You were told that if new investors How came How much along, were your shares diluted? How much were his? You signed the papers. You set me up. You're gonna blame me because you were the business head of the company and you made a bad business deal with your own company. This is gonna be like I'm not a part of Facebook. It won't be like you're not a part of Facebook. You're not a part of Facebook. My name's on the masthead. You might want to check again. It's because I froze the account? You think we were gonna let you parade around in your ridiculous suits pretending you were running this Sorry, company? Sorry! My Prada's at the cleaners! Along with my hoodie and my fuck you flip-flops, you pretentious douchebag! Security's here. You'll be leaving now? I'm not signing those papers. We will get the signature. Tell me this isn't about me getting into the Phoenix. You... You did it! I knew you did it! You planted that story about the chicken! I didn't plant the story about the chicken. What's he talking about? You had me accused of animal cruelty. Seriously, what the hell's the chicken? And I'll bet what you hated the most is that they identified me as a co-founder of Facebook, which I am. You better lawyer up, asshole, because I'm not coming back for 30%. I'm coming back for everything. In the end, this film is just an interpretation of the events and the creators of Facebook. Yet it gives some strong critique on Facebook, packaged in a wild story of power, friendship and betrayal. Suggesting in the end that the most successful social network in the world was created by someone who was just trying to fit in. Hey guys, thanks for watching. The Social Network is one of my favorite movies and it was a lot of fun to analyze it. I still think there's a lot more in this movie that can be explored, so I would encourage you to watch it yourself. The next video will be about Apocalypse Now and uh, Duality of War. If you have any ideas or thoughts on this analysis, I would encourage you to comment in the comment section below.
And of course, if you liked the video, please subscribe and we will see you next time.